two, two here we go three <laughs> for whatever wait what did i say i got so distracted just then. <laughs> that was really awesome and then we here we go it. one two three hello <laughs> ladies and gentlemen welcome to another episode of horseshoes and hand grenades the show that brings to you the latest and greatest from odd and crazy news from all over the web i am a co-host who has been doing this show for 301 episodes and still can't get the intro right <laughs> we bring to you the news like we were uh like we were ghost hunters you know we go into the internet as if it were some kind of haunted castle hot spot and we we go in with our gear and our equipment and our weirdo magnetic pulse arrays <laughs> and we find the news and we talk to it in a little microphone we go hey hey if you're the news that's really weird slam this something. door slam the door and it's like bam <laughs> slams the door and we go, oh, we don't found the news. And we grab our little traps and we slide about. We hit the button that goes down to the light. And we bring it back to you to deliver in all of its wonderful goodness With right here With a new video bumper. I'm your host, Steven. And we have a new video bumper. <laughs> we have a new video bumper. That Pay thing, attention to my new video bumper. So if you, are, if you are a fan of the show and you watched the video you just saw moments ago, an incredible bumper created I'm to Ashley, us by, by, for, by Joel Aaron, for created us. for us. Am I, did I say to us? I'm having a hard time tonight, ladies and really gentlemen. Too, this really cool dude, he made us something, and we like it. And right. his name is Joel Aaron, and he has movie wits. Yep, and he gave us he gave us a really cool bumper to put at the beginning of all our YouTube videos. I'm so happy about it. It's just made me uh, just, I can't even tell you. It's like Christmas. I haven't even been drinking. I was going to say, what the hell is the I haven't even been drinking. <laughs> I, the, you'd think that, that 301 would be like, Steve is going to be fresh. He's going to be good. He's going to have it all so together. So fresh and so I just hit myself in the face with the microphone. Ashley's going to have it together. <laughs> no, but there's not going to be any kind of this amateurishness going on. That's a lie. There we are as amateur as it gets, but now we're getting paid for it. You know, the crappy thing is, I wear red lipstick pretty much every show, so my face shows up on the screen, so, like, you know, my, my features don't wash out. Yeah. And uh, I happen to hit the microphone with my mouth, and then I'll hit my face with the microphone. So it, I've got, like, these little <laughs> red hashtags on my nose by the end of it. I'm like freaking Rudolph up in here. I got, you know what, really, hold on a second. I got a thing. I'm ready for, all right, let's do this. I'm as mad as hell. You know what really grinds my gears? You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. I'm sick and tired of people changing the name of the pound symbol to the hash symbol. I'm so done. I'm so done with it. On your automated phone call things where you say, press, push in your special identification number and then press pound or hash sign. Who? Are you serious? I'm not kidding you. That's they a thing? Put, they say press pound or hash sign. In case you're a moron, it's a hash sign. J it's a pound. It's been a pound <laughs> since 1925. Whenever Alexander Graham Bell was like, I got to invent the telephone. He said, that's a pound. <laughs> it's, 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 not, it's not okay to make us dumber. I swear, I heard like years ago, I thought this was going to fade out. I heard pound symbol or number sign. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. We're going down to number sign? This is insane. We are just, we are dumbing down the planet. Hash symbol? Stop it. That's like Twitter's been out since 2007. You've, actually, you've got like a vein it doesn't, right here. It hurts my brain to think that we're doing this. We're just, oh, let's just forget that it's called the pound sign. I'm resistant to change. In the, I hate it. I the hate it. group, um, Joel hate it. actually posted something the oh gosh what about it? a hash symbol well it was if somebody it? tweeted tweeted it somebody shies up. hashtag somebody tweeted it um i can't where did it go wasn't it in the group it's joel ridiculous. was it in the group but anyway uh, it was it was it was one of the social media things and uh it was like one chick i guess it was facebook so she's like ha, one chick ha, two ha. cups Oh dear lord! <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Go, I'm sorry. The coffee's working now. <laughs> but it was she had um, 
ha 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 idiots had a hashtag on phones in the 1990s she's like twitter wasn't even invented in the 1990s what did they need a hashtag for oh you're kidding me i'm like please be kidding like please be a troll is this how our parents felt when <laughs> when when we came along and we started doing stuff talking about tape recorders and stuff and they were like record players are really where the sound is good I mean, what, uh, what, what in, in the previous generation did we come along and they thought, you guys are stupid. There's a real conversation to be had here on, on the current generation's nostalgia trip where all we want to do is it's create like things games. from the 1980s. I mean, all we want to do right now is do sequels to the Goonies, new Ninja yes. Turtles movies, Transformers all over the place, Thundercats, everything I, that is popular now. Oh, <laughs> we want Star Wars back, and not only do we want it back, we want the Millennium Falcon, we want Harrison Ford, we want Carrie Fisher, we Chewy want Mark Hamill, Yoda. we want everybody involved except Alec Guinness because he's dead. The rest of them have to be there, and and, and I don't. I mean, we can create a seance for is Guinness. It, well, <laughs> he is one with the Force. <laughs> We could just put him in the movie and make him blue. We could just hire George Lucas and be like, George, can you please Here's a crayon. Here's the film. Go to town. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Yeah. No, I just, I feel like when I was growing up, I was allowed to have a childhood that was unique and new things abounded. Like That's why it was so awesome. That's why we had Ninja Turtles and the Goonies right. and well, you Indiana had, Jones. I watched movies that my mom had available, which was like back to, the, my mom and dad had available, was Back to the Future indiana jones gosh your parents are young you know all that kind of stuff but that was just around but it was also out at that time and i'm sitting here thinking i think to myself sometimes i can't wait to sit down with my future kids and watch indiana jones or watch watch back to the jurassic future with park them. or jurassic Aliens. park but that is not necessarily the thing that they are going to love you know what I mean? Like, if, why? You, if you don't show those to them first, if they watch movies <laughs> now and then try to go back and watch that, they're going to be like, this is bullcrap. Are we stealing their childhood away from them by trying to push ours onto them? I don't have a kid. I know, but I'm just saying in general, this, this upcoming generation, are we shoving our nostalgia onto them and saying, hey, this is what's cool now, and it's just going to regurgitate itself. And they'll think, oh, this is awesome. Only if they like it. Today. Like, if they like it and then get into the performing arts industry, then, yeah, it'll just recycle itself. Because I, well, I mean, and it's, it's natural, right, that this kind of thing happened, that, that we, we are now old enough to be in control of the content that's being pushed out yes. to the world. So we are creating the things that we know and love, but why are we not creating anything new? Why are we not doing something crazy new awesome? Because I think you said it once before, the, the people that are in, that have control over, you know, creative arts, performing arts kind of stuff right now are people our age. Yeah. I was like, man, that was friggin' awesome. It's, it's the whole um, Ubisoft thing. Like, life was much better when we were younger. It sucks now. Right, right. Or nostalgia, if you don't want to use. Yeah, it sucks Viking. now because we're adults. So we'd rather treasure the things that we had when we were younger by just making them again so we can watch them again. I get, like, I'll listen to certain songs that I listened to when I was younger, and it makes me so freaking happy. So oh, yeah. freaking happy. Because you've got, you've, got, you've got things connected. My mom says parents have always done it. So apparently this is not a new thing. Yeah. It's but, just we have more access and control now. Well, I mean, my mom was trying to get me to watch the Goonies and stuff like that, but that was new when I was born. Right. Like, that was new coming out. Yeah. And now I just I just wonder if that's if that's a problem. If I don't think it's going to be a vicious cycle or anything. Yeah. I, I think that, I mean, there's only so many times you can read. Like, they're rebooting Reboot, and I'm super stoked about that. Right. It's just yet another thing, though. Why, why aren't we creating something new? Why are we just pushing back the things that... I mean, I think there's new content coming out. It's just that some of the content that came out in the 80s and 90s was just really freaking... I don't know if everybody was, like, on acid or... <laughs> there was some weird stuff. What? But, I mean, it was just really good. <laughs> yeah, there's... Like, some... the Dark Crystal, that's that's creepy crap, man. That is... You know, that is one of the most complex... There's these dancing things that toss their heads all around. Blah, blah. You remember that? Blah. Anyway, that was apparently the most difficult to choreograph puppeting that <sighs> anyone had ever done. I never thought about that. Dad tried gun smoke. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm assuming that's your dad typing. Oh, oh, maybe maybe that's gun smoke. The, the maybe show. my grand my grandpa tried gun smoke, or my dad tried to push gun smoke on if me. If this is Tim, type something that makes no sense. <laughs> my my dad my dad slash mom. I don't know who has the keyboard right now. One of your family in the members. chat, but. 
Yeah, I guess that's right. My, my dad wanted me to watch westerns and stuff. Yeah. You know? Well, I, like, like my first movie was Aliens. That was not. I just hit myself in the face twice, like in in three seconds. It's a good thing that lipstick stays on. I guess that's what he <laughs> said. Oh, oh, I, I get it. I get it. Oh, I don't even remember what I was gonna say. This, that was bad. This Jack. This They're making a live action Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast. The, uh, I, yeah, I liked Beauty and the Beast. I, I'm not a huge fan of Disney movies. I liked Beauty and the Beast. I liked uh, uh, Mulan. Mulan was really good. Mulan was okay. And I liked Beauty and the Beast because Mulan, library. Mulan had Mushu on the panda, and the panda goes up the tree. And I <laughs> laughed and laughed and laughed. Spoilers. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Spoilers. But there is a panda, and it goes up a tree. I hate to ruin it. Such a, it's such a funny movie. My dad did try to get me to watch Gunsmoke. I really, I really love westerns. There's something, and maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe we found the link. Maybe I love westerns because my dad loves westerns. So it just, it is perpetuating a cycle. Because I, I love The Lone Ranger, the new movie, and I am definitely in the minority. Even people I liked who it. love westerns hated that movie. I liked it. it. I mean, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, but I liked it. Oh, it wasn't great. Yeah, but, but there I liked were it. moments where I was like riding the horse with the cowboy hat. Now I didn't even it, the story note. I was just like, "There's guys in the dirt. They're riding really fast." I just love. I want to go out to Utah or wherever the devil John Ford shot every western ever made and just ride around on a horse out there with a cowboy hat. I just there has to be somewhere to go riding around here. There is. Well, considering it was hell hot today, the horses probably all died and melted into a puddle of glue. It actually did show on the phone. If you looked at it, it, it said hell. Mordor. Hell degrees. Welcome to Mordor. <laughs> Next stop, hell. <laughs> it was so freaking hot. I came out for lunch because I, I sat in my Jeep to eat for lunch because I just went like away from everybody. Um, and, you know, nobody's going to crawl in the back of your Jeep with you. Wait, what? Oh, well. That sounds like a... I, I hope not. Nobody would crawl. Nobody your... from work is going to crawl into the back of my Jeep with me. <laughs> I don't want to ride in your Jeep anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, just don't sit in the back. I don't want to ride in your don't Jeep sit, at all. Don't sit in the back seat. There's so don't much... sit anywhere past the... the... A lot of DNA in that Jeep. Yeah, pro yeah probably just not sit in the Jeep <laughs> at all. CSI just walks up with their black light. It's like, I don't... <laughs> never mind this one. Uh, Yeah, but my, my rear view mirror had... The glue didn't... You know how, like, the glue will get sticky and, and fall off? The glue is not sticky. The glue had evaporated. It was completely dry. That's like, amazing. Totally. Speaking of... I was impressed. Oh, I need to you, get put you, some JB Weld on you help here. me with that tonight? <laughs> Would the resident man please come and help me put my rearview mirror Jeff back Jeff said you had to hold it in place for, like, ten freaking minutes. Jeff... Jeff Jefferson. Is pretty? Yeah, he's pretty. He's no, he's pretty. probably right, actually. <laughs> he's, pro he's probably right, but I don't have the patience for that. Yeah, I'm just like, that's not going to happen. You do have to hold it in place because it needs to cure. Well, it needs to set. For it, 10 minutes? It cures overnight, but it needs to set. Not for 10. Because when I glued hold. the dishwasher back in place, I had to do that. For 10 minutes. For a certain amount of time. For yes. two, and then you walked away. For some kind of some kind yeah. of established amount of time, I had to do that. Very specific, actually. I feel like something just fell down my so um, I do have this this kind of thing to report. We do have our first Patreon sponsor, and I would like to just call out uh, Dr. Pipes. Yeah! Say thanks for sponsoring us on Patreon and now paying us to podcast. We're officially your employees. That was the um, best thing ever. Like, we woke up the morning after our 300th episode, and it's like, you have a Patreon subscriber. <laughs> and it, I peed! It was great. So, uh, so Pipes... Paying us the podcast, and we are happy to be doing that. Thank you, um, sir. You're amazing. You have him. no idea how happy you've made us. If you would like to contribute on our Patreon, you can go to <gasps> patreon.com slash H&H &H show. Do it, do it, do and, it, do it, do it, do it. I got my little Instamax Fuji camera thing, and we tried it out, and it's freaking awesome, and I want it, and like, I have the cards, and I want to send people stuff. Ashley wants to send people stuff. We might have to readjust some of these, some of these tiers now that <laughs> I got a better idea of what we're doing. Okay. We may have to adjust it, but it's only going to benefit you guys. Yeah. I would not adjust it to not benefit you. No, this is Steven. I would we're adjust about. it to benefit you because that's what I, I like to make people happy. It's, it's one of my many faults. <laughs> that's why we podcast. That's why we podcast and party. And I have another thing to let you know about Chris Marino and Coleman Ranahan found each other in LA and hung out. And from this, I see nothing but greatness. Right? They sent me a they sent me a picture of them both hanging out 
partying at Coleman's birthday party. They met each other such. through our show. So you've got Ranahan, who's like a genius writer, movie maker, and you've got Marino, which is a genius, genius comic Genius writer, book comic artist. book guy. Yeah. Look at these two jokes. Yeah. Freaking like that. They wouldn't know each other if it weren't for us. Yep. And I'm taking all the credit for that because Steven and I are awesome. Yep. We're Coleman's humble. face slowly turns into like, uh, anyway. <laughs> Those two guys were hanging out since the picture. I was really happy. So I just want to say congratulations to them for meeting each other. I, I hope they had an equally exciting time with one another because they're both incredibly talented individuals. Every one of you guys that listens to this show has an amazing talent that you are using for the good of the world. And I'm really happy about that. Miss Sarah Lee, she had painted some uh, Adirondack chairs. Oh, yeah. And she, she sent me a picture of them a while back. And then all of a sudden, um, another one of our friends from Beckley sent me a picture of the same chairs because they were out for auction. He's like, holy crap, Sarah did this. Wow. Like, yeah, I know. She's pretty cool. That's so, I mean. Yeah, I was like, that's so cool. You guys are awesome. I, hey, by the way, just a little update. I started working on my novel again the other day. Yes. That I That I was working on in November. I started working on it again. Um, did anybody I'm excited about it. do that with Steven? Did anybody NaNoWriMo with you? No, you did for like a day. I didn't write anything Yeah, I don't all. think you wrote a I single didn't word. I didn't open it at all. No. You didn't write a single word. Mm -hmm. um, I I did accomplish the goal. I wrote 50,000 words. They just don't end. I, already, I, just, I have 50,000 words. I just, I'm just like, meh. Yeah, so I need, to, I need to create another NaNoWriMo for myself just to finish the book. Just, just write 2,000 words a day. Done. Get it done. He'll, he'll finish it. November's close enough. that. No, I need to get it out by Christmas. Well, that's what November's for. I got to be a suffering artist. I have to go find a cabin by a lake. <laughs> wander around in a robe drinking, like, mouthwash. Seeing random people <laughs> running <laughs> around. Yeah. You got to drink, drink mouthwash and smoke cigarettes. Because that's the way artists, that's how real artists do it. That sounds awful. Uh, it's, it's necessary. Anyway, shall we do the show? Yeah, I guess we, we can continue? do that. All right, are you ready? I have the hiccups. Factoid of the week. I like how it resonates. Sigurd the Mighty, a 9th century Norse Earl of Orkney, was killed by an enemy. <laughs> Did I say Orkney or Orkney? Or Ork Earl of Orkney. A 9th century Norse Earl of Orkney was killed by an enemy he had beheaded several hours earlier. He tied the man's head to his horse's saddle. But while riding home, one of its protruding teeth grazed his leg. He died from the infection. Wow. Dead man done killed somebody. That was impressive. That's... That, can you... Like... Oh, you'd be so you happy. you think he knew? I mean, he had to have known. Uh, why? You... I mean, you would have been so happy to know you had just beheaded a man. And you're heading home with his head to show your king. Like, that is the ultimate double flip off up yours. F you. Yeah. It's like, I'll just bite you in the leg. Sorry. I mean that. I mean that. That's terrible. But I'm. But the more important question we have to talk about here is why protruding teeth? Were they were they made of razor blades? Were they filed down? Did you know them British people ain't got no teeth? Maybe his tooth was cracked or something, so it had a jagged edge. Well, okay. So you behead someone, they're not going to be placidly like. <laughs> they're probably yeah. going to be like all grimacey, rigor mortisy. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, so if you had any sort of jacked up teeth, which everybody did back then, because dentists, thank God, were not invented. <laughs> I I just don't see how a man who just killed another man would have his. I mean, he got bit by a dead person. Well, okay, so you it's got like this a, head. It's the first zombie attack. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually was, really hilarious. It's the first zombie attack, dude. That's just that's karma in a butthole. So you've got this like dead head bouncing off your saddle and i mean it's just it's <laughs> and by deadhead she mean, she doesn't mean grateful dead fan she means an actual deadhead right all i was thinking about was jerry garcia hey we should actually do a, a milestone where you shave your head no <laughs> no no okay where you shave your beard no to the pirate beard no can that please be a milestone no everybody voted Everybody voted, and yeah. you're a butthole, and you won't do it. If I people, like my beard. If people pay you enough, well, then make it really high. Make it really high, milestone. Yeah. <laughs> See, like look at this crap. What do I do? So how do you shave just like this? Yes, like that. You would look like a sir. So you shave. I just shave out this part and, like, right here. Yeah. So it would be just 
It would be mustache and goatee. It's pirate beard. <laughs> I look like a pirate. Pirate beard. Oh, God. Set the milestone <laughs> maybe, and, and create pirate beard. Maybe we do it for Dragon Con this year. I go as a pirate to Dragon Con with my pirate stupid beard. You'd have face. to like wear eyeliner though, but, no, because it's Johnny like, Depp made pirates rockers. <laughs> I know pirates have to wear eyeliner yeah. now. It's so it, it would. It's all business up here, and then party face. Like I just, I'm just partying with my mustache. But you need, you gotta grow it to a point on your chin. Yeah, yeah, pull it out. Yeah, put glue in it or something. <laughs> Like just this. have Stephanie lick it. <laughs> ew, ew, ew! I just imagined doing that to somebody, and it made me sick. That's because you're just a dude. Threw up in my Stephanie mouth. Stephanie doesn't a mind bit. licking your. I'm no, nobody gonna... wants to eat hair. No one. No one. <laughs> <laughs> Smash is bad. Smash is a bad person. Okay, you want to do a story? Yeah. Okay, here we go. World news! I got some jacked up volumes today. I don't know what, what, what happened, but I'm hearing like horrendous things coming out of my computer. I feel like somewhere along the way it's, it's, it's my fault. Is it? Oh, you put that new buzz thing in. Do you think it's that? Put this thing in. It should be doing fine, but I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. It might be that. Huh? No, it's... Yeah, I don't know. I need to tear all this stuff apart and just lay it across the floor with as much distance from every cable as as I can get and figure out what's broken. String its guts out. It's such a mess. H&H podcasts from the floor. (laughs) Man disappointed. I want to do that in a British accent because you just did. Yay. I emulate people. Yay, you should... should. Man disappointed with penis and larger. (laughs) <laughs> That's like I mean, <laughs> newscasty radio. It's Brit. not mine. A Malaysian man who purchased a penis enlargement device online was unhappy to receive a magnifying glass <laughs> <laughs> in the post. <laughs> I wouldn't let Stephen read that before the show. That's so funny. <laughs> I mean, here's your penis enlargement device. It's a giant magnet. You're walking around Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Does the, it look bigger? <laughs> it looks bigger with this. <laughs> There's some invention in here somewhere. Uh, the disgruntled customer, named only as Ong from Seri Kembengen, paid more than 80 pounds for the device. Uh, MCA Public Service and Complaint Bureau Chairman Datuk Seri Michael Chong. It's too many names. Uh, he said, when he received the package, he was shocked to find a magnifying glass inside. The instructions that came with the package merely read, do not use in sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much he paid for this. That's awesome. Men and women are equally vulnerable to these scams, he said. Lawyer Alec Cock. <laughs> what? What? That does not say that. What? Yes, it does. His what? name is Alex Cock. <gasps> It says it's cock. So, it's so appropriate for and this particular story. With... Wow. <laughs> so, lawyer, this is not a... Did you pull this off that fake news site or is this window. real? Uh, maybe. This is great. Lawyer Alex Cox said that unsatisfied customers who wish to sue these scammers would find it difficult. It is especially hard if there's no proof of purchase such as receipts. We wouldn't know who to sue or where and how to sue them, he added. There's a lot of puns in this because I just read it's especially hard and that just threw me <laughs> off. This, this is a gold mine. Where did you this find is, this thing? It was on Ananova. We need so many more that are like this. This is the best story I feel like ever. With public service and complaint. Oh here. my gosh. <laughs> MCAPS. What is it, MCAP? Well, I was just seeing if that. I don't know. MCAPS? That's Michael the, Chong. Michael M M caps MCA. Uh, Medicare air pollution. It's just MCA study. and then public service and complaint bureau. Oh, well, it is MCA MCA right. movies, MCA records, Motor Club of America, Muslim Community Association. Steven drank coffee. Mechanical Contractors Association of Chicago. Hey, we've got a friend that lives in or used to live in Chicago. I was reading a. Uh, I was reading something. What was I reading? I was reading a. Story on how to be a better public speaker uh-huh. or a, a thing, and it was talking about improv classes and how you should. Geb take does improv. Geb does improv. Yeah, he's we been trying to get me an, to go to a show, but he's six hours away. So I'm like, we yeah. should find an improv place around here and go. I'd be embarrassed. I think that's the point. Apparently, everybody sucks. Coleman did it. Coleman went to Second City. 
that where all this where all the Saturday Night Live people came from. You gotta be all smart in no. front of people. And you're so much you're so much quicker witted than the average Joe. Else you wouldn't be on a podcast doing what you're doing. Getting paid. Getting paid. All right. I'm just so happy about that. Like that just makes me all tickled on the inside. Pipes, you tickled his insides. Congratulations. <laughs> That's an award. For that, at the tier you participate at, you tickle Steven's insides. I, I don't really know what that means. Sounds pretty inappropriate, though. Uh, sounds like a proctology exam to me. No, that would be awful. I don't want it. I don't want and it. It's even funnier because it's pipes. <laughs> <laughs> pipes. <laughs> pipes. If pipes became some sort of, of orifice explorer, like a gynecologist or a proctologist or you're an orifice. Honey, <laughs> your uh, your yearly orifice exploration <laughs> appointment is today. <laughs> yeah, orifice explorer. That's the new job. That's the new category. <laughs> You're looking through your your high school guidance counselor's book of things Most you can do. Most likely to be an orifice explorer. It's written right there under O. Oh, orifice explorer. C. Gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best thing ever that's when you don't know the right term for the job i got a letter in the mail from my gynecologist today what'd they say or yesterday is everything clean yeah they're like you're good i'm like i know that yeah, but you feel don't you feel like you're oh good that's a weight lifted off no i mean either. there is no way there is no doubt whatsoever so there's no there's just like shit. She's like, can I? Should I test you for um, HIV? I'm like, no, you shouldn't. Yeah, you I don't shouldn't. need tests. Right. What is you? What are you trying are to you say? Sure? What are you is sure? That? And I'm like, no, I don't need. I promise, I don't need tested for. It. She's like, okay. I mean, I know you would be mad, but <laughs> no, Corinne, I would not be mad. I would be murderous, but no, I, I don't need. We're we're what, good. What okay. does it? What does it mean? <laughs> just I don't know. I, I'm sorry. Door the orifice explorer. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, You should man. choose a trending hashtag to talk about for a few and tweet it while you're live. That's a good idea. Really? I don't know. I feel like that would distract me. I mean, we already have the, the chat. It would distract the crap out of Steven. Here, let me find one. How do you know what's trending on Twitter? I hate Twitter. Like, I just I click. I just scroll down until. No, that's boring. That's technical. No, that's boring too. Our butts. Yep, Twitter sucks. Our butts trending. How do you where, like? Where's the tra what? Where's the what's trending button? On somewhere, Twitter? somewhere up your butt on this thing. I don't know where it's at. It's, it's, there's, I got this this app, and I don't know how to work social. We need a social consultant. Who's Andrew Lawrence? I don't know. Hey everybody, good news. Lavar Burton's <laughs> Lavar Burton. He's doing good in the neighborhood with Reading Rainbow. Is he really? Uh, I just saw that on Twitter. We kind of figured. Was, no. I love that guy. There's nobody more genuine about childhood literacy than LeVar Burton. I tell you what. Not even some moms want their kids to read as bad as LeVar Burton does. Not even some teachers want their kids to They're read right. as bad as... I know. Do you want to do another story? Yeah. I, I mean... had an entire topic. I had an entire thing I was going to talk about. And it's gone. See, you this threw is what, it away. This is what Twitter does to Steven. Distracting people up in the chats, making me all crazy, telling me stuff, designing the show. Was it <laughs> about Wiener Kegels? Dude, Wiener Kegels. We made that up last week. Wiener Kegels. Yeah, Wiener Kegels. Are you doing Kegels right now? <laughs> I, told, I told my sister. I was like, dude, you need to do Kegels. Kegels in the morning and in the <laughs> evening because it's it's good for everybody if if a chick does her kegels. Well, and it like it's it's good for baby having or something. It can prevent a prolapse later in life. It makes sex much more enjoyable for a, both people. You ever seen a rectal prolapse before? That's bad news. That's why I won't lift weights. Big That's news. why I won't. Lift that's the only thing keeping me from being a monster of a human being is the picture I saw once of a rectal prolapse because some dude tried to lift 900 pounds and they did not. It did not end well. His end ended. I don't even know what his I was end, trying to do. His, well, his end didn't end. It kept no, going. End, that was the problem. Came right out of there. Yeah. Because, you know, it's no secret I've had a hemorrhoid once or twice or three or four times. 
and I don't want to be a part of that that world. I feel like that would be painful. And I, yeah, that was an awkward doctor's appointment, by the way. Speaking of gynecologists, I, 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 I didn't feel go like to there one. is nothing more intrusive than going to the gynecologist. Nothing. <gasps> oh my gosh! Ah. Okay, so scream into the mic. Sorry. It's all it's all good. <laughs> We're good. Okay, so I think there's mostly guys that listen to this, except Sarah, Sarah, and Ginger Al, and my mom. You can tell the story now, though. Yeah, let's. <laughs> you can push it to the back. <laughs> blip, 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 blip. So, you go to the gynecologist, and the one I went to in Beckley, which is apparently medieval, <laughs> used this <laughs> steel trap that they put in you, and they screw it open. Ooh. Yeah, and then so, they they do their whatever. So there's. Is there a, I'm going to search gyno devices. Like it, it's metal. And it screws open. So anyway, I went to a new one down here in, you know, the land of enlightenment. And she basically, see that plastic thing? Wait, this the plastic thing? dildo? That. That's this? the new thing. She put like a plastic dildo in instead of the metal clamp device. And I'm like, did you just put a plastic? Like it has nuts on it and everything. It's like a plastic dildo as I'm opposed to, it, to the metal thing. Yep. That- and I'm just like, <laughs> Maybe it's because it's cheaper. I don't know. Well, I mean, the metal thing has screws on it, man. That pinches. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. You, you like you have things, and then they they stick this like freaking goo. It's actually on the bottle. It says freaking goo, and then you know, like when people go get a uh, an enema, and then when they said they walk out, they need to be wearing a diaper. Yes. Oh yeah, because they're all. <laughs> Well, this is like a, it's just, it's goo. So you feel gooey and then you have to be totally naked, like completely naked. And they flop open your thing and they just like press around on your boobs. Does this hurt? Does this? It's awful. It's freaking awful. <laughs> it sounds like the most horrible experience in the world. Yeah. You, they and, stick you, and, thing and, and you have to keep your hand back like this. So it's like. Pinch me like one of your French women. <laughs> That's so awful. I'm just I'm, like. I'm really glad there's only like two places that could go wrong on a dude. Like if you're a dude, you might get a kidney stone and I mean now they got all these things they can do to fix kidney stones other than putting a tube up Laser. your wiener. But uh, you know, back in the day <laughs> <laughs> Eric says it looks like they stick a caulking gun in your crotch. I mean Essentially, because they goo you up. They're like, let me just put some, uh, like, a pound of freaking goo up in there. What kind of mad scientist decided that this was an appropriate way to, to test for things? God, God. <laughs> when I think of those words, Tony, I have an entirely different image in my head. I think you mispronounced cock. <laughs> C-A-U-L-K. That's what, that's what you do. I just, uh, uh, I'm not a fan. I will tell you this. It is awkward going to see somebody about a hemorrhoid. A hemorrhoid? They got to look at your butt, and it is not fun. You're thinking, well, I told the doctor I got there because I needed some prescription medicine. I was having a bad time. For your and butt. And I, I said, I said, I know what it is. I understand what I need to do. I've got this under control. This is not my first rodeo. And she said, okay. She said, well, do you need me to look at it or anything? I said, I... It's up to you. I said, you're the doctor if you want to look at it. I literally told her that. I said, if you want to look at it, it's, hey, I'm, I'm game. You but had it in Corinne? Yeah. She you had, had to a drop trow in front of Corinne? Yeah, well, she's a doctor. But I mean, she asked. I said, I know what's going on. I'm not worried about it. But you're well, the I doctor. Well, I figure lots of people say that, though. Yeah, as, if you're the doctor, then you, you decide whether you want to look at my butt or not. And she did. And I was like, well, now we're closer. She doesn't remember. They see so many people. I talked to her the next time, and she they, had no they clue. They thought they recognized me because I'm Stephanie's sister, and oh, we look right. so similar. Yeah. But not by the procedure that was being done. They can't go, oh, I remember you now. <laughs> so they make it down to the vaginal area. Oh, yeah, you're freckled. You're the one with That's the vajazzle. Constant. <laughs> I have tried a lot of crap, but I have not sparkled my vagina. There's a thing. It's a vajazzle. It's the hilarious. I had no idea this existed until the other day. I just feel like it wouldn't last. They glue in that. rhinestones okay. on your crotch. So, <laughs> assuming you do get vagina azzled, <laughs> you're probably doing it so when someone is in that area, they can see it. Wouldn't that just be like 
a hazard to... You might choke on one. <laughs> <laughs> I embarrassed myself just then. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more like skin abrasions <laughs> or, you know, split your tongue open. But yeah, you could choke on it too. Sandpaper. Depending how excited you got. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Oh, crap. <laughs> that is what you call a glory hole. <laughs> oh, buddy. Shall we do another story? Oh my gosh. I yes, think we please. should. Small town news. Uh, <laughs> it's your turn. Entire bridal spelled incorrectly because I suck. Party falls into lake. <laughs> I can only hope that when I get married, that it is this phenomenal. That you fall into a lake? Before the wedding. <laughs> That's the best ever. A bride was left with more than a few blushes after she, her groom, and their entire wedding party fell into a lake during a photo shoot before the ceremony. Do you know how long a chick takes oh, to get God. ready for a wedding? Like, there is an inch and a half of makeup on her face. She's, like, corseted and spanked and sucked and tucked. So, <laughs> I mean, she basically would have just floated straight down. It's it, it, like if oh, Iron dude, Man fell drown. in the water. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it was that deep. You would There's drown. There's a picture. There's a picture because it was during the photo shoot. Okay, if I can get my stuff to cooperate. Mm. I, D- keep, I got the hiccups now. This sucks. <laughs> Dan and Jackie Anderson were posing with their bridesmaids and groomsmen on a jetty in Cross Lake, Minnesota. 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 An hour before their... I burped. Their nuptials <laughs> were due to begin. But they were plunged into chest high water when the jetty gave way beneath them. So, yeah, it's found it. It's good that it wasn't deeper. Three of the bridesmaids managed to scrabble to safely before falling in. (laughs) Scrabble to safely. It says safely. Shut up. Scrabble to safely. Before falling in. But the rest of the wedding party were standing in towels as their dresses and tuxedos dried off. Despite the setback, the ceremony started just 10 minutes late, which is better than most weddings. That didn't fall into a freaking. I I'm see. sorry. I, there's I. I know that I'm distracted, but it's because you wanted me to show this picture. Yeah, I'm so just, I completely. It looks from from right here. It looks like the Loch Ness. <laughs> <laughs> I blame you for all of the things that just happened. The dra- the dramatic dip was captured on video. Dude, that is the whole wedding party. Yeah, I mean that, all of them. It's funny because I was sitting there trying to adjust it so I could put it in the video for so long, and I did not actually take in what to the picture look at was. It, yeah. I'm just like, dirt, 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 buttons. That's, that's like 90 people. That is a ton of folks in there. And the, the bride's, her whole poof dress is wet. Her whole poof dress. Her whole poof dress. It's good she didn't drown. I mean, if you... It's good she didn't drown you 10 minutes to, before her wedding. If you <laughs> fell in with all that cloth on you... You're you're not swimming back. I mean, you're gonna have to figure out. You'd how to have get to that have someone off. to. Dra- there's no way you could get that thing off in time, unless I mean, there's just you'd have to have someone drag you. I think we just found David Blaine's next challenge. <laughs> Wear a complete wedding outfit and escape the water. We're calling you out, David Blaine. Into twenty feet of water. Cold water. Yeah, he, so the he first did thing. hold his breath for like an hour and a half, though. There's no way you'd be he brain is, dead. He is a superhuman. Brain dead. He, well, he is. Have you ever seen him speak to people? I have some cards. Wow, you're surprised at my cards. <laughs> I found your card. I also levitated while I was holding on to your card. You know, it's really exciting. I'm going to go lock myself into an ice cube now for the next month. <laughs> that's the best David Blaine ever. That's, that's David Blaine. He, he is the most uninteresting magician I've ever seen. He talks. That's the best ever. He's got high eyes. And he talks like he's bored to tears with you. And maybe that's just his shtick. Maybe that's what he does. But I don't I don't care for it. I don't like Chris Angel either. That dude's a big old... Like, I don't like him because he dated Holly from Girls Next Door and then they broke up. Oh, okay. That makes sense. No. The Girls Next Door was the only show you could watch with your wife that had boobs everywhere. That was Stephanie and I used to watch that. I actually took it to law school with me, to my Christian law school, and I felt like I needed to hide it. Cause it was, <laughs> it's contraband. I mean, it wasn't porn, but it was like the Playboy well, you mansion. you have boobs. So other people's <laughs> boobs are not as 
like not a thing, not a yeah. problem. Yeah. But if you're a dude, you don't have boobs, so you you seek them out. <laughs> the boob seeker. You have to find the boobs. The and you're sitting there watching seeker. watching the uh, the girls next door, thinking, "I'm just there's just boobs everywhere." But everyone around me that's a girl is just laughing. Oh, there's like, a video. This is a great thing. You found a video of the wedding party. Um, I run. Can't, I can't Was click it. it. I can't. I can't click it. Why can't it. you click it? Because it's not there. No, dork nogger in the chat room. Dork nogger. <laughs> <laughs> no, dork nogger. <laughs> it's going down. It's a video. So you're so How wonderful. How long is dork nogger? That's just you're. You're a dork nogger. Play, look at their faces. Oh. I'm gonna. It's so because you put like some. I know this is great radio. Audio listeners, just bear with us. Well, you'll hear screaming. Because, oh. Just imagine porn. Can't. Oh, we're we're can't. Can't. oh, they're standing on the most rickety thing I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude is laughing so hard right now. Oh, he's splashing. What's the bride doing? <laughs> like, this dude right here, I'm laughing all the way to the right. He doesn't even hesitate. He doesn't even hesitate. He's just like, wow, ah, this is the funniest thing that's ever happened in the world. And I'm sure the bride is in tears and freaking out. Oh, they're trying to get Hefty out. <laughs> oh, poor Hefty. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. So, anyways... That was a good story, Smash. Yes. I think we've done well. Do you want to do News Bear Left Untold? Yeah, we could do that. My volumes are so screwed up. Your volumes? I don't know what's going on. I would like a volume. You should share your volume before the show, man. That would make it interesting. Volume. Man wanks with a cucumber. <laughs> I, I saw this one posted in the uh, the Tadpool Facebook Reddit. group. No, it wasn't on Reddit. But you somebody said it was Reddit. I put it on Reddit. You put it on. Reddit. I'm putting stuff on the H and H show dot Reddit dot com all over the place. Dot Reddit. Dot com. And by all over the place, I think I posted like three stories this week. Reddit, Looking Reddit, for some Reddit. some help. Uh, police responding to a suspicious incident arrived to a public library to find Frederick Tennyson Davis <laughs> sitting in the library holding a cucumber in one hand and his manhood in the other. <laughs> Surely Double he was thing. just doing some sort of fruit inspection. Fruit. You know? Just holding one and like, oh, vegetable. Cucumber's a vegetable. I knew that. He's doing some sort of. Well, the texture on this one's okay. The texture on this one's a lot different. And he just got a little confused. What if he was trying to just compare cucumber to wiener? I feel like maybe your kitchen is a better venue for... <laughs> than the public library. Yeah. I suppose you're right there. Davis was recognized by a member of the staff who had spotted him last April vigorously masturbating <laughs> in Scarborough Library. That time, he also had a cucumber in a free hand. <laughs> what is wrong with this guy? Does he just need symmetry? Is he symmetry obsessed? I must be holding one object in this hand and the my object in the other. I wonder, I if, I wonder if he was shaking them both at the same time. <laughs> Why? Well, like, maybe he was just, uh, I don't know. <laughs> maybe he was Maybe he was there just rocking back and forth with him. <laughs> how, how does that work, Steven? Maybe he was just rocking back and forth with him. Oh. It is, it is as yet unknown why Davis was wielding a cucumber while performing the act on himself in the library. <laughs> so the world may never know. This is like how many licks does it take to get to the, the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop? I want a Tootsie Pop. A one, a two, a three, <laughs> three, <laughs> a three. Stupid owl. That stupid owl ate that boy's Tootsie Roll Pop. I uh, hate that guy. Pedo owl. That guy was a jerk. He says... Let's find out how many it takes. Just give me your Tootsie Roll Pop, and it eats it in three. Don't give your candy away, children. Don't give your candy to owls. They're a bunch of bloody savages. Such jerks. Uh, so Toronto Police Constable. They have constables in Canada? Constables. 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 Uh, David Hopkinson told reporters that on April 7th, he sits down, and a 26-year-old woman sits next to him, and he opens up his laptop. Dun, dun, dun. Why is, why is no, this keep in, reading. Keep reading. Why, why keep, is this in that tense? Keep reading. The man keep then reading. started fiddling with himself with one hand while grasping a cucumber in the other. 
Hopkinson asked if Davis threatened anyone at the library, to which he replied, I don't think he had any free hands to make any threats. <laughs> Maybe he has a condition. Maybe he has to hold the cucumber, because if he doesn't, he'll stab somebody. I, maybe maybe he needs a boyfriend, man. Oh, maybe he's doing some simulation there. Yeah, maybe it's he's like, practicing. I'm just trying to make sure everything's capiche. Uh, Don't so, stick a cucumber in the refrigerator and then... I think we've learned this life lesson from you once or twice before. I'll it's say it again. It's important. Why the cucumber, the world wants to know, but we're just going to keep talking. He was not using the cucumber to pleasure himself, as far as I'm aware. It was held in his other hand, multitasking. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. Like, <laughs> I don't know why you would I mean, that. okay, so apparently Theories. he needs to be in public, because he's done it before. Right. He's an exhibitionist. So, but why the hell? Like, I mean, okay, masturbating in public, it's, it's weird, but it's not that weird. Masturbating in a public library with a Wait. cucumber is... It's weird, but it's not that weird. Like you, you up the you up the weird factor so exponentially weird. when you have a vegetable with you. I mean, if Pee Wee Herman did it once, it can't be that weird. This is just what are you gonna, what are you doing what are you doing to cucumber, man? That's the more that's the like, more does weird that get, part. Where does it go? I, I, I mean, like, I would have stood and watched him to figure out what the hell he was gonna do with the cucumber. Yeah, maybe. All right, this maybe he's grabbing the cucumber. Now what? Like filmed it and just put the commentary in the background. I just want to know. Like, I, is he gonna eat it or is he gonna shove it up <laughs> his butt or what? I mean, was he watching things on the internet or is it just the cucumber? I, I he sat right next down to someone too. Sat right next down. Sat right next down to him, <laughs> did he? <laughs> I had a stroke. Uh, the cucumber's wait and smile. Yeah, uh, it's definitely symmetrical. Uh, so the cucumber-wielding public masturbator has been charged <laughs> with an indecent act count and two counts of fail to comply with probation. That's a crappy sentence. Uh, 49-year-old Davis picture, David the, the picture had been released as police believe there could be other victims. Further, <laughs> more cucumbers than <laughs> victims? There could be other vegetables that have been insulted by this man. If you have I seen, assault vegetables and then I eat them. I once found a, a banana salt. peel left on a bench somewhere, possibly eaten by Davis. <laughs> further further <laughs> reports that confirm that Davis was charged with mischief and an indecent act in another library. So he goes to libraries and he, ta he takes his stuff out and gets his cucumber out of his food line bag and sits there quietly doing his thing. With his cucumber. That is my Twitter going off. I'm sorry, you guys. I didn't know that they could hear it. I guess if I can hear it, they anybody can hear, can hear anything. Yeah, all the things. I don't. I just don't know why the. the I thought you were just going. clicking inappropriate things. No, I've never clicked anything inappropriate in my life. <laughs> oh man, I started. Stephanie and I. Stephanie volunteers at Kid City at the church, which means she's got the what sixth graders. She has yes, she has the eleventh grade no eleven year old sixth grade girls. Yeah, she's got sixth graders. So I last week I started and I've got the second third graders. So when we break down to what they call a small group, I have the uh, the third grade girls, and so that was all well and good. And I'm just like, what did I get myself into? So um, Stephanie and I get done. We're outside the sanctuary. We're getting ready to go in for the eleven fifteen service, and um, one of the women walks up to us and she's like are my women that watch the the two-year-olds they just didn't show up they had no volunteers for the two-year-olds and yeah. of course who's readily available and standing right there yeah i'm like i'll help <laughs> and so steph's like yeah we'll help and so and i'm like yeah go help I don't know what to do with two-year-olds. I'm going to go do my thing. Yes, yeah, seems like I got I, he I got buttons, like I, I got to work the soundboard. I got buttons to press. I got to do Steph is like, are you going to be lonely? I got to do, I know. Ah! So, yeah. Um, none of them are potty trained, so they were all wearing diapers. I've changed one diaper once my entire life. I put it on backwards, and it was a pee diaper. <laughs> and in order to clean the child, I filled up the kitchen sink and dunked it in the water. <laughs> I don't know how to change a diaper. <laughs> I actually cannot watch our kids. I'm just like... Stop bouncing the baby in the water with was, the poop, bud. That was one clean baby. 
It was, it was pee. You gave it a bath. You didn't even attempt it. Well, just to like it, it peed on itself. It. I mean, I wouldn't want pee on myself. You got to do the, the wipey thing. No, I don't I'm know not, what I'm talking I'm not about. Wipe either. wiping a kid's butt. So this little this little boy named Isaac has to go to the bathroom. I don't know what, how to deal with kids. I've never watched these kids in my entire life. So apparently, you're not supposed to let a, a second grader. No, a two-year-old. He was two. You're not supposed to let a two-year-old go to the bathroom by themselves. I didn't know that. See? Like, I'm just like, I'm self-sufficient. I'd have been like, all right, go. Yeah, so I let him go in the bathroom. Like, 20 minutes later, I'm like, Isaac, what you doing? You done? No. <laughs> Isaac, I'm coming in because the doors don't lock. Um. Okay, so I open the door, and he's butt arse naked. Well, he had a shirt on. Yeah, from, shirt, no from like, the, yeah. You he, he, had a, he had it piled around his... He was standing in front of the sink playing in the water with his pull-up diaper and his pants around his ankles. That's the way little baby kids pee. And I was just like... I'm like, Isaac, pull your pants up and come out, okay? He's like, yeah. Just close the door. 20 minutes later, open the door. He's still playing in front of the sink with his pants around. And I'm just like, Isaac, I'm going to pull your pants up, okay? So I'm sitting here kneeling down. I have like a two-year-old's butt in my face. <laughs> and I'm like... There's like a little two year old. I don't want to, so, and I didn't want to touch any butt particles. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to touch you, child. You so, <laughs> I like take the pull up diaper and I'm like shaking him like a pillow. Like, go in the. This is an exaggeration. In your but, pants. Yeah, I'm just like, get up. And then, like, I couldn't get his pants up. So, I'm like rocking it back and forth. I'm like, get your pants up. You need a pair of, a couple pairs of tongs. Yeah, that just to go. So <laughs> let me pull them up. Like a bootstrap. Like, you, yeah, you do that and you put your foot on the kid's head and <laughs> you pull, it, pull their pants up. Yeah. Right there we go. I knew a kid in kindergarten that peed like that. <laughs> Pulled his pants all, all the, the way, way to down. the floor. Like, by the time I was in school, I had the understanding that only the buttons and the zipper had to come open. Just enough to get your your Because then you have pee your, pants. Yeah, just to get out of there, go pee, and then button it back up. This kid, no, he was all the way to the floor, but just hanging out for the world to see. It was the most peculiar thing for me. <laughs> I, there's a lot of things I remember, and I remember my little child brain staring and just going, "What the heck is he doing? Like, what is it? Why do that?" Because I felt like that was unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, that, that's. I'm just like, what are you doing? And then. The this next little girl, like she was the most adorable thing. She was Southern incarnate. Her name was Scarlet Ray. Yeah, Scarlet Ray. Yeah, had a little Two pink words. bow in her hair and the most beautiful dress. So she she started doing the pee pee dance, and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, honey, do you have to pee -pee potty? Dance. Yeah, I gotta and go. Starts nodding. So I take her in there, and then like her diaper was different, and I don't know that there's different diapers. So I'm like trying to pull it down because she can't get it down, but it's like the Velcro one. There's no stretch to it. I don't know. I've never exactly. A yeah. So <laughs> I and she had like little. So I get that. And then she, she, I'm like, you can wipe yourself, man. I'm and expecting you to train me now that you've been fully trained. I don't. I don't know what I'm saying. So she gets. She grabs the toilet paper and then wipes her butt with her dress. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> yeah. I gave up. I, I feel like you had a good experience, though. I feel like. You came out of there now more prepared than ever. Yeah, I know. Next time, Stephanie gets to take them to the bathroom. <laughs> you get, she gets pee pee duty. Yeah, you get pee. I hope they pee -pee all have duty. to poop. <laughs> Every one of them has to poo. I, well, I don't know when I got potty trained. I, I remember being potty trained. I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember ever peeing in a diaper. So it was probably before I was like sentient. I don't you know? remember that either. Like, I don't ever remember diapers. No. So, so I think the key here is to know the kids got to come out of the diapers before they can remember it. Yeah. It's kind of like it's apparently it's it's around two for most kids. Yeah, they start yeah. they start doing their own thing. Yeah, going to the bathroom. Because I'm I just gonna hold my kid over a bucket and not deal with diapers to begin with. So there was a time, you know, where you go by yourself. You just need help to take care of it afterwards yeah you need help not to wipe I'm your done. butt with your dress i'm done i'm through and then they come get you so i remember doing that i remember the only instance i remember is my grandma's house yelling that you're just like i'm done i'm done come wipe my anus yeah tall humans <laughs> tall humans there's no amount of service you will ever get again until you're just old and incontinent and then you're not going to want it. Then you'd be like, nah, I'm My butt is dirty! Service me! <laughs> yeah, kids. I don't know why I'm suddenly Zim. Kids are so entitled now. People coming to wipe their butt for them. No wonder. 
wipe their own butt. That's why you dunk them in the water. Here's your trophy, kid, for having me wipe your butt. <laughs> Everybody gets a trophy. <laughs> the WTF says. <laughs> So, wait. That's his, oh, this is your story. Okay, no, no you just good. told a long story, so I thought it was my turn again. Sorry, yes. Oh, I, did ta- <laughs> I did talk a lot, didn't I? Would you like to read the sprinkles no. since I hogged the microphone? No, you can have the microphone. I hogged it all at the beginning of the sure? show. Are you sure? I'm sure. I don't need to talk none. Police have <laughs> released a recording of a woman who dialed 911. That was another thing. One of the, one of the things that Joel posted, It was uh, a chick was like, did they change the emergency um, dial to 911 after September 11th. Are you kidding? No. People are stupid. Yeah. People are This dumb. is what happens if you don't educate your kids, man. Good gravy. Really? Yeah. R- yeah. Uh, yeah. 911 <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> da, 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 da. Three. <laughs> Three. <laughs> I'll just put this over here with the other fire. <laughs> if you have not seen the IT crowd, you need to watch the IT crowd. Like, that it's was just... so funny. It's so good. It was so It was ridiculous. Especially funny. if you are in IT at all or know someone that's in it. It's, oh, gosh. it's phenomenal. It's so funny. I don't know what to do about the fire. It's just... Because it, it, there's... I mean, I feel like they categorized all the the geeks and nerds classifications. Yeah, I mean, they basically p- they ran the gamut when they had when they had uh, super uh, Moss and 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 other dude. Yeah, can't can't socialize with anyone. No, is halfway decent at socializing, but is really not. Just ad- yeah, yeah, it's something. I don't know words. Anyway. <laughs> This chick decided to call 911 to complain about the amount of sprinkles on her ice cream. That's not okay. So. It's not an emergency. No. I just, I, I've called 911 once when I thought someone kidnapped my dad. And I had my, <laughs> I had my Glock in my hand and I was about to drive out and shoot some thugs. Nobody's going to kidnap your dad. No. I promise you. And they then I had to call them it. back and be like, psych, don't dispatch. And they're like, oh, I'm so glad he's okay. I'm like, yeah, me too. Cause I would have gone to jail for shooting people. Yeah. And that's on a recording somewhere. It's fantastic. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yay. The internet knows. The caller contacted emergency operators during a row with one of the with an owner of an ice cream van. So, <gasps> ice cream truck. Oh, that comes around here. I need to be around when it comes Why back. Why didn't they come around today? It was balls oh, to green. It would be so awesome. Yeah, man, 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 Gosh, I love the ice cream truck. Mm. I don't even care if I want ice cream when it comes around. Orange squirrels. Orange squirrel. It's the best ice cream flavor I've <laughs> ever had. <laughs> During the minute-long call, the woman told the operator, it doesn't seem like much of an emergency. If you lead with that, oh. don't call. But she said, but it is a little but bit. But it is a little bit. I kind of feel like this is some old lady that's just genuinely upset if and doesn't know who to call. Click on the thing and listen to it. Oh, there's a. they have the call? Yeah, they release it. What? Why are we not listening to it now? I've ordered an ice cream and he's... Well, I guess I'll just let you play it. Where the devil is the it's, call? See the, that, that, oh, that button. link. Yeah. Oh, okay, here we go. Okay. Here Are we, we going to play it? Yeah. Hello, I'm sorry to ring, and it doesn't seem like much of an emergency, but it is a little bit, because I'm at an ice cream van, and I've ordered an ice cream, yeah? Um, and the person is basically giving me the ice cream. He's put a bit on one side, and I'm on the other. So I've said to him, can you do She's so British. And he's like, that. no, no, he's not being trusted. I said, but, okay, fine, then can I have my money back? You can keep the ice cream. He's saying, refusing to give me my money back. Saying that I've got to take it like that. I'm standing at the van with the, and I believe it's missing. Right, okay. It's okay. not really yeah. a police matter, it's a civil matter. So, how do I deal with this? Right, well, you have, if he's self employed, obviously, you, he's the manager or whatever, ask to speak to yeah. the manager. If not, you need to speak to uh, Citizens Advice Bureau or Trading Standards. Citizens Advice Bureau or Trading Standards. Trading Standards, yes. Yeah, how do I get all of them? Um, so no, it'll be on the internet. Yeah, it's on the internet. Like okay, this is a nine 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 le- life and death emergency line. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. I like how she's like, yeah. You're so polite. This is a nine 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 emergency Oh my gosh, line. British people. And it, it, it that okay. All right. That's, that's a civil uh, matter. Yeah, she was really nice. I that's mean, a, she gave her the that's information. That's not a police matter. That's a civil matter. She. Yes, yeah, <laughs> but uh, how do I, 
<laughs> it's on the internet. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> this is an emergency right? line. It's not yeah. life or death. That that yeah. was so British. I that was beautiful. I'm sorry the volume was kind of quiet. I couldn't get it any louder. I got some kind of volume jacked upness going on. That's that is term. the professional term. It for is uh, volume, volume jacked jack upness tonight. I don't know what the devil's wrong with it. What? My whole world is wrong. It's all wrong. That really makes me happy. So don't. <laughs> she's like. It doesn't seem like much of an emergency, but it is a little bit. There's all these sprinkles on, on half, half my ice cream, and it wouldn't give me my money back. They were like that, but basically, I'll wipe my ice cream and you have a Again, how do you be that British? How do you, how do you Britos communicate with one another? We I need bet. to get, oh, we'd go to hell, Dave. Oh, yeah. What's his name? They dude, were cool dudes. Dude, I forget your name. Dude, uh, Mark? No. 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 Let's go to Hell Dave. Maybe think of a British name. Aldi. No? Let's go to Hell Dave. Oliver. Maybe. Hell Dave. Let's Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. What's his name? Is his name uh, the Artful Dodger? Because <laughs> I can only think of literary names. <laughs> I can't. I like the Brittos go up when they ask. Yeah, they, they ask the questions. Or I... just say things. So you're going down to the party? I'm going down to the party. I got my cell phone. Mobile. I got mobile. my mobile. Yeah. Got my mobile in my pocket. Mo I don't. I don't remember. Going up at the end because I'm British. I want to be like, what is your name? Why are you asking so many questions? Those aren't questions. Oh Those are wait, statements. Alex North. Alex. By Byram. Yep, that's a Brito. Alex North Byron. And Alex and, and his friend that I really can't even... Dude, I want to play that game. We had them on here like 150 episodes ago. Yeah, that was fun. I had seen he the game He was drunk. He was drunk. He was drunk. He skunk. was a drunk Brit. It was great. He was talked nonstop. Phenomenal. He reminded me of when I'm tipsy. It was, it was phenomenal. We're not both going to hell. But why? It's not a thing that you go to hell for. Because we want ice cream? Or because no, we can't remember people's we're picking names. on the British. Oh, dude. They picked That's on how we us got Murica, man. Well, we yeah, picked we, on the British. I know. We picked a fight. We said, dude, taxes. That's his mind, Dunka. What else did we say? I'm, I wonder. We said, that's his mind, Dunka. That's, that's land is mine. Is my land is your land? Oh, wait. That's not really your true. Your land is my this land. This land is my, my land. My land is my land. All right. Get the hell off it. There. Or I will scalp you. Da, 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 da. Wait. <laughs> Wait, you're singing the uh, Native American version of this song. Well, I, I, they really should have told us to go French home. Taught them how to do that, so it's not really they, Native American. Thing. They should have told us to go home. I think they did. We they just did, told and them they were no. like smallpox. We were like, here we go. We brought some diseases. Here's a blanket for you. It's really a, a sucky. This is this land was bought with blood. Like oh, for, for bad British impersonation. We're not bad. We have amazing Boy, British. He's the best British impersonation you've ever seen. <laughs> Sound like Bob Hoskins, right? Oh, my God. That's so good. No, nah, uh, that's, that's so probably. Good. I, I, the, the right is more Australian, I think. Maybe? No? <laughs> yeah. Pipes would correct me. He's a Kiwi. He uh, knows what's up. I have a um, a friend from Australia, and I guess uh, they were doing yard work in the backyard at, at some point, and I guess the neighbor got pissed off and came over to the, the gate and was like, you know, could you possibly make any more noise? And Brent was like, well, shit, yeah, and went and, like, started up the lawnmower and all kinds of was, When Josh, he's like, Brent walks up and goes, well, shit, yeah. I'm like, yeah. yes! We're yes, all so back. Australian. <laughs> I wonder if Foster's is really Australian. For no, people. Josh, you said nobody in freaking Australia drinks Foster's. So that's crap. Nobody drinks any of their native drinks. He said Pantene was really popular down there, though. That Pantene was the, that was the posh. Yeah, I'm like, dude, that's like a fifty cent shampoo here. It's a piece yeah, that's of crap. normal shampoo. It's crap. Oh, dude, sales. They don't have sales in Australia. Sales. Like sales, not like solar sales, but like. <laughs> Like, wait, that wasn't even a good like thing to say. Like, for sales? Like, Ma Macy's sales and stuff. Why? Or shopping malls. No, they don't have something. Because I followed an Australian chick into Macy's once. That sounds worse than it is. And <laughs> she was talking about something. You all understand if my mom's something Australian sales. Blah, 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 sales. And we have the taxes rolled in with everything. How yeah. do you do math here in America? They're and a I, colony. How do you know what you're paying for anything? 
And I'm sitting there thinking, you know what? We don't. We don't really, because we're so wealthy. We just slide the card and go home. Well, if our middle class keeps dying. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm just saying, in general, America says, oh, that's this is sixty nine ninety nine. That equals less than seventy dollars to somebody. Right? Yeah. Doll for sale, less than twenty five dollars, twenty four ninety nine. Shut <laughs> up! Not, that is not okay. You know, it's not. I'm as mad as hell. You know what really grinds my you gears? Just, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. We should seriously roll in the taxes with things. We should. We do it at the movie theaters. You go to the movie and you pay. Five bucks, or no, wait, excuse me, $18 for a ticket. <laughs> 30 and it, for it a says, bottle of water. If it says $18, that's what you pay. If it says $7, why can't every industry do that? Why can't we go? And gas. Why can't, gas. Gas is like, oh, we got our taxes rolled in. You pay three seventy-five a gallon, four eighty-five a gallon if you're in California. You just pay the money. You just walk in, and if you see a Milky Way, and explain this to a child, because a child is going to walk in and go, I have $3 in my hand that my mom gave me. I can afford a Milky Way candy bar, because it's $2.99. Wrong! And then she walks up to buy the Milky Way, and the man says, that'll be three eighteen or whatever your taxes roll out being. She sits there, and she's going to go, I have $3. The sign said two ninety nine. dollars How is it three eighteen? Because Explain. the government wants to screw you in the bum. And if it's me behind the counter, I go, you're precious. And Here's I pull a, a quarter out of my pocket <laughs> and I cover the taxes for it and say, we learned something today. That in America, we cheat the consumer by pretending that these things are cheap and they're not. That's a, oh, I, I, that's actually very true. I understand what you mean now. Yeah. Like, I, yeah, yeah. they should include it. In, it should be... The total price. Like when you right. go to Amazon and it's the total price. They do that in other countries. They just don't do that here. Well, they kind of do. They do it for, you know, what the government wants. Meow. They don't do that here. They they, they just tell yes. you, your cash, your your purchase is 6% tax. And, and it's some kind of invisible charge. It's kind of like when you buy a house. You see the house listed for X price. You buy it. You have a percentage added on for interest. And you look... At, excuse me, that was a burp that just escaped. When you look at the payment at the end of your 30-year loan, and you have paid a substantial amount more than you you saw on the listing. Because and it's unfair. It's ridiculous. Because interest. of interest. It's crazy. And I mean, granted, they, at least they show you that and how your cost is going to break down. So you know you're paying a ridiculous amount. But this is a little bit different, the loan process. But the tax thing, roll it in. Just roll it into the prices and let us all have a good day. They do it in other countries. They can do it here. Wait a minute. You can't just do that in America because consumerism or some such or some kind of government conspiracy. <laughs> you don't want the government taking over your life, then you don't want to put taxes on the price. What's the difference? And they only use that argument when they feel like it's something that benefits them. Like you they, know? yeah, I don't. You know, Congress doesn't get paid that much. We got to give ourselves a raise every oh, so often. And then, I mean, you just, it's, it's ridiculous. I don't understand anything that we do around here. We can't use solar panels. It's unviable. Because, <laughs> Stephen, if we use solar panels, the sun will run out of energy. Oh, gosh, and yeah, I know. Our kids. Well, I mean. I, it's amazing. If we were to use solar panels, we would choke the sun out. I mean, it would just run out of power. Yeah, I don't understand us. why people are suggesting that. It's appalling. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it may work for you, but what about your kids? You want to talk about global warming? Wait till wait till the sun is trying so hard to bake our stuff. It's just it's going like, to be a mass the whole implosion, implosion and everybody, it's going to like turn into a black hole. There's science behind that, says the Republicans. Yeah. Oh, Eric. Eric actually sells goods in America. Therefore, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I've been calling Eric out this whole time. <laughs> Eric, Eric oh. tax. No, Eric's always charged me that exactly what I'm supposed to. Yeah, pay. he never puts tax on there. No. I don't think. Oh, dude, Eric busted out some of his uh, old school deviant art, and I'm just like, he's so good. Like, cause remember, I got the Batman and the Catwoman, and oh, drew yeah. all over the envelope. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, dude, that guy. I tell you what, Those he's an artist. Happy. He's a professional. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, dealing with our rants, raves, and fun times. And uh, we don't have any mail sack stuff for you today. But just a reminder, if you, if you do want to send us email, you can do that at h show at gmail.com. 
You can always support our Patreon at patreon.com slash H&H show. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, where you can subscribe, become a patron. And we've got some cool tiers. We may rejigger those tiers a little bit. Rejigger. You may rejigger them a little bit to get more rewards down, down, down south. Wait a minute. <laughs> that sounded fun. I'd rejigger those to get some rewards. Uh, no, but we, we can do that a little bit. Uh, if you want to contribute story stories using hand grenades, you can go to h&hshow.com slash reddit, or h&hshow.reddit.com, <laughs> and put, give us some stories there if you're, if you're a fan of the reddits. Um, also, where did my stuff go? You can download our show on iTunes. Leave us a review. If you haven't left a review for Please? the show. And you use iTunes, which I know like five of you do because iTunes is a crappy music player. <laughs> but, but it's a great place to get podcasts and people do look. So if you, haven't, if you haven't reviewed us on iTunes, we'd love for your reviews. Just as honest as you can possibly be. You know, five stars. These people are great. That would be awesome. Yeah, I want them to have my adopted babies. They, uh, you know, wonderful Highlight like of my that. week. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter. I'm Steve H&H. &H, and the show is at H&H &H Show. And you can always... I'm not going to say that line because it's not necessary anymore because of Patreon. You can contribute to the show with Patreon. Click you can send us a dollar, stuff. 50 cents. Yes. I don't even care. I don't even career. I don't even career. The word I was about to make up. I don't even career for my career. -er. So it really does mean a lot for you guys to hang out with us. Mega thanks to Pipes for paying us to podcast uh, so far. And we will leave you with these words of wisdom from Buddha. He says, holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else. You are the one who gets burned. Or like grasping a... Hot cucumber in one hand. And, and your hot wiener in your another. Your hot wiener in the other. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next time right here on Orange Shoes and Hand Grenades. Bye. Good game, everybody.